right. Today we're going to be talking about um, the life cycle of a conifer, which you'll see in just a minute. Basically just means a tree that reproduces using cones instead of flowers. Um, so those are going to be notes 13. Before you move forward in the video, just make sure you have either the printed off notes on something to write with or a piece of notebook paper and something to write with. If you're doing the handwritten notes, it should look something like this. You'll have your name, your name on top. Um, Reproduction in conifers is the title. You want to have your divider line here and notes number 13 in the corner. Okay, so some of the simplest seeds that we um, can talk about are the conifers, okay? Which is basically a name that just means any kind of tree that is a cone carrier, all right? So typically, typical um, pine cone trees, um, I actually don't know if there are any other types of cones, but uh, any kind of tree that reproduces using a cone. Conifers come from the seed bearing plant group, the gymnosperms. Okay, so um, I don't have my like review chart in here like I had before, so I'm gonna kind of try and draw it here. Um, but we had the plant kingdom, right? We have the two main phyla, which are the vascular and non-vascular, okay? The difference being that um, the vascular plants have veins while the non-vascular plants do not. Uh, gymnosperms are in the vascular group of plants. We have, um, but not quite yet. The two next subdivisions for vascular plants are um, seeds and seedless, okay? And then gymnosperms fall under this seed producing group. Um, one type would be the angiosperms, and then the other type is the gymnosperm, okay? So the angiosperms are those that reproduce using flowers. Um, the gymnosperms are still vascular plants that reproduce using seeds. However, instead of having the seed um, enclosed inside the flower that would eventually turn into a fruit inside of the ovary, um, the gymnosperms don't have that covering, okay, which we'll get to in just a little bit. In a pine tree, the cone is the reproductive part, okay, instead of like the flower with angiosperms. The seed from a conifer is called a naked seed, which is actually what the, the term gymnosperm means, okay. Uh, angiosperm means covered seed, gymnosperm means naked seed, and this is because it has nothing on it except its own seed coat, okay. Now, let me explain what that means. For a typical angiosperm, right, you have um, the seeds on the inside, maybe something like this, um, and then around it is the the case. Ooh, my word, the casing <laughs> or the the fruit. Okay, um, all of those nutrients and things for the seeds to grow are inside of that fruit. Okay, so for example, this would be an apple. With a gymnosperm, however, um, you have the seeds, but there is no covering on it. Okay. Technically, the seeds are all are just located inside the folds of those big, big spikes that you see on pine cones and things like that. So if this were the pine cone looking type thing, okay, um, I'm going to draw the seeds in blue so you can see a little better. But the seeds are actually located right here in these little corners, okay? And we'll go over how these are uh, produced in just a minute. But um, the difference is th these seeds inside of the pine cone with the gymnosperms, they're not covered by anything, right? They're just exposed to the air inside of those folds. While the angiosperms, those seeds are covered by um, the fruit around the outside. Okay, there are two kinds of cones on the same plant. A male cone, which is smaller and carries the male cells, okay? That's going to be this, um, this cone down here and a female cone, which is larger. I'll circle that one in purple. Um, when you think of a typical pine cone, you're actually thinking of the female cones, okay? Also, the female cones grow in the upper branches of the tree um, where they can be fertilized by pollen grains, and the, the male cones tend to grow on the lower parts of the tree, okay? And, and we'll see why the female cones are on top in just a little bit, but um, the female cone is generally larger, okay, that's what you typically think of when you see a pine cone. Um, the male cones you've probably seen before, you just may not have known they were actual pine cones. Um, I did not know this until I studied it a little a little while ago, but um, the female cones are, are the typical kind that you would see, those big kind of thick brown looking ones with the spikes on the end. Okay, so a couple examples here. Um, I'll stick with my purple and blue. This is the female cone as are these right here, okay? The male cone, I'll circle in blue, is this one, 
All right. Uh, it's usually looks a little, it usually looks a little bit thicker. Uh, in some ways it almost looks like a, um, like a not quite developed pine cone when truthfully it's that's about as developed as it gets. Um, but it doesn't have those like insert, like, um, uh, insert gaps in between each spike that the female cone has. Okay. Um, the male cone is just kind of one solid structure all the way down. A couple more examples. Um, this is a male, this is a male cone and these, the, the big brown ones, the one that we normally think of as pine cones, these are all the female kind. So the difference being the male cones, as you see on the left here, their job is to produce the male cells, which they do produce pollen grains. The, the female cones, their job is to produce the egg cells. And the egg cells are always located, uh, like I showed you in the first picture, um, at the very, at the base of those kind of spiny spikes. So if that were the cone, the egg cells are located right down here, okay? Uh, so if you're doing your handwritten notes, uh, the first general topic is sexual reproduction in conifers. We have uh, the term conifer means cone carriers and they have very simple seeds. They are also gymnosperms, uh, which means they are naked seeds because they have nothing on but their own seed coat. Um, if you want to draw, you know, your kind of example, like what I showed you before with the, hopefully you draw a little better than that, um, with the apple, like the seeds inside of the apple, and then maybe just the pine cone, kind of like that. That will hopefully help you remember that uh, gymnosperms are uncovered while angiosperms are covered. And then next we have in a pine tree, the cone is the reproductive part of the plant. And there are two kinds of cones, the male, which is smaller, and carries the male cells, which you could actually add here um, pollen if you want. And then the female cones are larger and carry the female cells. So real quickly, we're gonna go through the, um, the life cycle of the conifer in steps, just like we did for the flower. So uh, step one, pollen is from the male cone is carried by the wind and sticks to the larger female pine cone. So what's interesting is this male pine cone uh, produces the pollen, just like the anther and filament and stamen of the flower. And then they release their pollen into the wind, right? The pollen is this very tiny little specks. Um, sometimes you see it, uh, it builds up and looks kind of like yellow dirt on your car or on maybe um, furniture that you have outside in your backyard or at your house. Um, but they're super, super small and carried by the wind. That's why it's important for these female pine cones to be located at the top of the tree because they wanna be somewhere where the wind can easily um, drop off the pollen grains to those female cones. So um, the pollen is carried from, from, or from the male cone is carried by the wind and sticks to the larger female cone. Uh, these pictures down here we'll get to in just a minute. Step two is actually what you're seeing right here, okay? This is when the pollen tubes grow from the grains of pollen to reach the eggs inside the female cone and a male gamete joins with the egg to fertilize it. So this is that big step we talked about before, fertilization, okay? Whether you're doing the, the printed off notes or the handwritten notes, I do want you to go ahead and write that because this is where the seed is formed, okay? So just like in a flower, right? Let me redraw, yikes, a super rough version of the, the pistol here, okay? Once the, let's do in green, once the pollen grain, attaches to the stigma, it begins to grow that pollen tube down because it's trying to reach the ovules inside of the ovary, okay? So the same thing happens with the pine cone. Once the pollen grain attaches to the egg cell, it begins to grow this pollen, this, uh, pollen tube as well. So looking down here at the bottom picture, um, you see here's the pollen grain attached. Okay, it's trying to get to the ovule, which in this case is over here. So it grows this pollen tube. Doesn't seem to be quite as long of a tube as some of the pistols that we were seeing before. Um, but what is this big thing around the outside here? Um, this is just the seed coat, okay? Or the kind of like the, um, the protective covering for the, uh, for the ovule there. Um, and that will develop into the seed um, later on once it's fertilized. So. Um, what's cool though about the pollen grains is they're actually shaped kind of like this. They have like little wings off the bottom of the of the grain, and that is so that when the male 
male cone releases those pollen grains into the air, they actually use those little like side wings to, to be able to float better through the air. Um, and you'll see that in a video that I have for you at the end. But that's just one way that they have adapted to be able to uh, fertilize the female cones, right? Remember we said adaptation is uh, just any characteristic that a plant or animal has that helps it survive in its environment. So these pollen grains are um, specially created to have these wings on the sides so that when they're released into the wind, the wind can pick up the pollen grains and blow them into the female cones. Stage three, uh, the fertilized egg divides and grows into an embryo. Okay, this is basically just a baby baby plant cell that could eventually grow into um, a full-grown plant if it's dropped in the right place. Stage four, the seed contains the embryo and also a supply of food. Um, that's going to be located kind of in this kind of blank space here. This is what the, the seed will, or the young embryo will feed off of as it grows into a full-blown seed. And then it develops a seed coat on the outside. Um, the best way I can describe this is if you've ever eaten like a peanut, you know, they have those kind of um, like papery kind of uh, coverings on the outside. Sometimes even like um, snow peas will have this, maybe even green beans, but they have like a thin film around the outside. That's kind of what I think of with a seed coat. Um, it's just like a thin covering around the outside of the seed to kind of help keep everything together and um, protect it a little bit. But um, it's nothing like having the fruit of the ovary uh, and the angiosperm protecting it. And then stage five, the seed drops to the ground when the cone opens. And if there is enough water plus nutrients in the soil, the embryo grows into a new tree. Okay, so here's what's really cool. I did not know this happened until, again, um, I studied it, studied it a few years ago. But these female cones, okay? So like I told you, they have those... Um, spikes I'm just drawing one half of one here they have those spikes right here's the little stick at the bottom inside of here is where the female cells are um, at this stage of the cycle they've already been fertilized by the pollen grain they've grown um, into full-blown seeds so the way that the female cone releases these is it actually begins to open up those folds and it kind of begins to fold down like an accordion, okay? Uh, later on in the Junopod, I have a, I'll have a time-lapse video for you so you can see what I'm talking about. But as the female cone begins to open up, it drops those seeds, those fully formed seeds out or into the wind or onto the ground or wherever they're going to be. And if those seeds uh, fall into a place that's suitable for growing, then the new pine uh, the new pine tree plant would form. So really stinking cool. Make sure you watch that time lapse video because I had no idea that happened. So uh, life cycle of a conifer. Step one, pollen from the male cone is carried by wind and sticks to the female cones. Step two is where the pollen tube grows and then the grain of pollen travels to the egg cells inside the female cone. The male gamete joins with the female gamete, which like we said is fertilization. Super important here. Okay. Um, stage three, the fertilized egg divides and grows into an embryo. Stage four, the seed contains the embryo and also a supply of food with seed with a seed coat on the outside. And then stage five, the seed drops to the ground when the female cone opens. And if there's enough water and nutrients, the embryo grows into a new tree. So that is technically all I have for you for this lesson. Um, it's pretty short. It's uh, not quite as detailed as the, the flower uh, notes because you already understand, hopefully by now, um, what fertilization is, what pollination is, um, embryo, things like that. So uh, this video right here is is a good recap video of um, pine cones and how they how they how they're fertilized, what they look like when the seeds um, have fully formed, etc. Um, I'll include that one in the pod as well. And then this one right here is the time lapse that I'll also have in the pod. Um, so watch both videos and then there are also some review questions on those. Um, one thing I wanted to note though is the test. Okay, make sure you're studying that study guide all this week for your last test, which will be Friday. Okay, um, and I've mentioned this, uh, I think I put it in the newsletter that Mr. Jimenez sent out, but I'm also going to mention it here. And I think I also mentioned it in the, the pod as well. Um, the information in this particular lesson, so reproduction of conifers, none of that is going to be on the test on Friday. The only things that will be on the test on Friday is what was covered in the study guide. So um, do not fret about these notes or any of the other extra notes we do this week. Um, you still have to complete them, obviously, because it's part of the unit. But 
um, you, will, you do not need to worry about memorizing or studying that for your test. So, um, but again, just make sure you're reviewing that so that you're ready to go on Friday.